So today we're going to be looking at another lock by SwitchBot. But wait a minute, this isn't a lock. So this lock here already exists. This is the SwitchBot Pro Lock. Well, this is a new keypad and it has a special feature. I see people. So this basically can do facial recognition and the bonus is it works with the SwitchBot Lock Pro, the original SwitchBot Lock, and the new SwitchBot Ultra Lock. So we're going to be looking at this and the keypad today. So as you can see, it's got a keypad, it's got a fingerprint sensor, and of course it's got the vision bit. So I'm just going to give it a charge, and if you open up this little lip here, you'll see there's a USB-C port. It does come with a USB-A to C charging cable, but I'm just going to use the one with my power bank. And there we go. So before we go through the installation of the keypad vision and the lock ultra, it's worth noting that SwitchBot did send me these to test and also I've only been testing them for a couple of weeks. So time will tell really. They're going to be selling the lock in a bundle with the hub mini. Unfortunately, they're not going to be selling it at the moment, at least in a bundle with the hub three, which I'm testing at the moment and I'll review soon. And you can buy this lock instead with the keypad touch rather than the keypad vision, which might help if you don't want to spend quite as much money. And this has been very reliable for us. So when it comes to mounting this device, you're always going to use mounting bracket A. And then if you wanted an angle, you actually put mounting bracket B on top of mounting bracket A. And then you can use the 3M tape to stick it or then you can use the fixings as well if you want to permanently install it. Another thing to consider when installing this is the height of installing it. Obviously, I wouldn't install it on the inside of the door, it'll be on the outside, but it recommends either 1.2, 1.3 or 1.4 meters, depending on the size of your household, basically. So if you've got a family that's really short and really tall, then it could be a problem, but actually the range is quite big. So unless someone's really over sort of six foot four or so, and someone's really short, then it might be a problem. But other than that, you should be okay for the general household. So actually reading the instructions a bit more, it recommends for single households to have it so that the bottom of the device is just about where your chin is. So you're basically eyesight with the detector. So given that we're just a household of two and we're only about four inches or so difference from each other, then I'm actually probably going to put it about there or maybe a little bit lower so that it works for both of us. Okay, so let's see how easy it is to set up. I'm going to do add new device, uh, see if it finds it. Keypad vision, you can see here. I knew I was going to forget something. So on the back of this device, you have to peel this off and there's a little switch here to turn it on. So make sure you press that switch to turn the actual thing on. <laughs> Flip the power switch on the back, which we've done. Press the two buttons at the same time for two seconds until the indicator flashes. So you see here, it's not actually easily clear which buttons you press. I don't know why they don't just keep this on the screen so you can see what you press, but it's actually the tick and the lock. Right, there we go, it's flashing, so let's do connect. So it says firmware upgrade, so let's do a firmware upgrade. So 100%, so that didn't take very long. It looks like it's just finishing. Great, done. Next, name the keypad. We'll leave it as that for now. It's asking you which lock you want to pair it with, but um. Well, actually, it says front door is too far from home. Ah, so that is my old SwitchBot lock, which is not on the door. And I'm guessing that the other one is not showing that's here is because it's already paired to a keypad. So I'm probably going to have to unpair it. So now the front door lock is visible for pairing because I've unpaired the old keypad. So connecting to keypad vision. Oh, here we go. Test code. Well, let's do this. So now we can just do some face entry. So let's try and add a face. Okay, so I'm going to add a face. 
Let's do a permanent face, complete installation, blah, blah, blah. Start adding. Let's get started with face entry. Hmm. Please face the device and stand straight. Oh, is that it? Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's start testing. So that was very quick. Um, wow. Your door has been unlocked. Okay, so let's give this a go. So, ah, so you don't press anything. Your door has been unlocked. Interesting. Let's try that again. So I'm coming up to my door. Let me in, please. Your door has been unlocked. Mm. Twelve seconds later. Do, 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 do. I'm coming up to the front door. Okay. I think there might be a bit of a delay between events. So if you keep trying it over and over again close together, then it's maybe not going to trigger again. Whereas in normal circumstances, obviously you're not going to keep going to your front door. So I'm going to try it a few more times and see if it's okay if you've not been in the front door for a while. One problem I can immediately sure see... is fully visible without obstacles. Oh, interesting. <laughs> One problem I could potentially see is that if you're mowing your lawn out the front, then it might keep trying to unlock the door or maybe even say that message that it just said then where it's trying to detect your face but can't quite get it. So that will be interesting. So now that I've actually bothered to look at the settings in the app, I can immediately see these three options. So the top one is whether it does automatically detect or if you have to press a button on the device or there's recognition sensitivity. So that's the distance before it tries to detect you, but you still have to get close for it to actually recognize your face. And then you've got the third one, which is the disable interview, so that it doesn't keep trying to detect a face all the time. Otherwise you might leave your house and it opens your door for you again, which is definitely not what you want. Uh, there's a couple of other options as well, but nothing amazing. Disable keypad, so if you need to disable it fully for some reason. There's the removal alerts, which was on the old keypad as well, so that if it gets taken off, it makes a noise. And there's just a couple of other things around audio. So if you don't want to have the noise on of it saying things to you, which I've now turned off, as you can see. And there's also a fast locking option, which I'm not really sure exactly what that does, but it does say it might drain your battery faster. So I'm going to leave it on and see how my battery life is. Okay, another test, just walking casually towards the door. Right, okay. The door has been unlocked. Yeah, I can work with that. Cool, thumbs up so far actually. I was a bit worried for a minute. So before we install the new lock, I thought we'd take a look at the different generations of lock. So here I've got the original SwitchBot lock, I've got the Pro lock which I just took off, and I've got the new Ultra lock that I'm going to be putting on. Uh, I'd forgotten a little bit how ugly this one was, but I'd also forgotten that the form factor of the Pro was actually slightly bigger than the original one. But on the new one, they have gone back again and they've improved the size and it's quite a bit smaller actually. If you have a look here, it's about the depth without the dial of the Pro. And I think it looks a bit nicer as well with the rounded edges rather than the boxiness. So now we're going to install it and see how it performs. Hopefully it will be as good as this one because I'm very happy with this one. And I was even very happy with this one as well. I've now put the keypad vision on the outside of the door because we're fairly happy with it and we're using it. So now it's time to replace the lock. So I'm going to take off the Pro and install the Ultra instead. Okay, now I've taken the bracket off, I've got to clean all this stuff off, which is not going to be fun. So it has an interesting way of fastening to this. So you've got two little sliders here. So you need to slide these up to the top when you put this on, just align it correctly and then let them drop down again, and then it locks it in place. Be interesting to see if that holds okay. So now it's installed, we need to put the battery in, but also remember to undo this tab so that the emergency battery actually works. 
So now I'm just going to go into the SwitchBot app and do add device and hopefully it will find the lock. Yep, we've got lock ultra here. So make sure the pack is in, blah, blah, blah. We've done that. The ring light is flashing. It's discovered the device, needs to affirm our update. So I've gone through the setup process, which was pretty easy, and it's calibrated the lock automatically, which I don't really like, because if I lock the door, you see that it goes a lot further than it needs to, which wastes battery life, and whenever I lock or unlock the door, I just do it enough that I need to. So it's totally unnecessary. So I am going to go into the settings, calibrate lock, and then there's an option whereby you can calibrate manually. So I'm going to do that and then hopefully it'll be better. Okay, so I've done the manual calibration and it goes so quickly now that I thought it hadn't worked properly. But if I do lock, that has locked it. And unlock, it's unlocked. So now the lock's installed and it's locking and unlocking successfully. I'm going to pair it with the Vision keypad. I'm going to pair it up with Home Assistant via Matter. And then I'll report back and let you know how it's all going. So I've now had it installed for a while. So I thought I'd do a bit of a rundown of the features and how I've got on with it. Well, generally, I've been pretty happy with both the lock and the Vision keypad. It's done what it's supposed to do, which is good news. Also, the installation I thought was pretty easy. The only complaint I've got is the calibration process where it's got a really irritating tone. I don't know why they've included that, but never mind. But everything else has been really good. Some of the other features to mention are like the battery life. So the battery life of the Vision keypad is supposed to be 12 months. So we'll see how that goes. The lock is supposed to be nine months. But I do also like that although they've changed it from AA batteries to a sort of rechargeable battery, that is that backup battery as well, which is really great because it means when you're charging your battery, the lock is still going to work. When it comes to the options of unlocking the door, it's pretty much limitless like it has been on the previous versions. So you can store a hundred faces, a hundred fingerprints, which is obviously more than you're ever going to need. You can also use NFC tags. You can use the pin number and it's got the fingerprint sensor as well. So I think that's great. Unfortunately, it still doesn't have the Apple Home key though, which I really would like to see at some point. It's got another interesting feature where it's got the button on the Vision keypad that you can press and you can actually link that to the lock so it acts as a sort of doorbell. But I've tried it and it's so quiet that no one's ever going to hear it. So I don't really get the point in it. You can, however, link it to the Hub 3 as well. So when I test that in the next couple of weeks, hopefully that feature will become more useful. Well, that's about it for this video, really. I've got some affiliate links in the description, which has currently got 15% off as well for the first couple of weeks that the products have been released. But do bear in mind that SwitchBot do tend to do a lot of offers. So if you're not up for buying it straight away, then you can wait and I'm sure another offer will come along as well. Oh, another thing to mention before I go is I did try the Matter integration. Bear in mind, you do need a SwitchBot hub for this and it does link to Home Assistant through Matter. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the sensor of whether the door is open or not. You can just lock and unlock it. So I would like to see them improve that. Also, if you use the SwitchBot Bluetooth integration, then that currently doesn't work. And that's just because it's a new product. I'm sure that will be available very soon. We had the same issue with the old lock before and it became available and it worked great. So hopefully they'll do the same with this one. So that's it for this video. So thanks. Until next time.